Okay, let's take a look at another RE question here. Uh, the question stem, despite its length, has this word keyword explained in it, RRE question. Great. So let's take a look at the stimulus. During the 19th century, the French Academy of Art was a major financial sponsor of painting and sculpture in France. All right, so this is, you know, again, like the spruces and sugar maples. I'm going to guess you don't know too much about 19th century French Academy of Art, but let, we got to paint our picture, right? So it's like in the 1800s, people are wearing wigs. You got this thing called the French Academy of Art. They just gave money, right? They gave money to what? To paintings and sculptures in France. Okay, got it, got it. Painter, sculptor in France, I get money from the French Academy. Sponsorship by private individuals had decreased dramatically. It's fine. Oh, okay. So, so here's a chronological, right? Something about history where maybe uh, this is the 1800s, maybe back in the 1600s, right? Maybe it wasn't the French Academy. Maybe it was some like wealthy patron, wealthy family that was sponsoring my work, right? But you know, 300 years have passed, 200 years have passed, and now that's not so much a thing anymore. Not so much like private individuals, wealthy individuals sponsoring art. It's now like this French Academy that's sponsoring art. Because the Academy discouraged innovation in the arts, there was little innovation in 19th century French sculpture. That makes sense, right? Like, you know, look, I'm giving you money to make sculptures. I'm going to guess that I have some level of influence, probably a significant amount of influence over the sculptures that you end up turning out, right? Like if I don't like innovation, I give you money to make sculptures. I'm going to guess that you're probably not going to have too much innovation in your sculpture. So this makes sense. Here's what doesn't make sense. Here's that uh, what makes me go, hmm. That is strange, right? Or, hmm, that's weird, or hmm, I need an explanation for this. See, in 19th century France, the paintings showed a remarkable degree of innovation. Why? Why would that be? Right? Like, the paint, aren't the painters also getting money from the French Academy? How come I'm not seeing the same lack of innovation in French sculpture, which totally makes sense, right? How come I'm not seeing that in painting? How is it possible? that the French world of painting was able to uh, display a remarkable degree of innovation. Well, this strange phenomenon, right? This strange phenomenon, this strange, strange set of facts can have lots of hypotheses, right? So this time, instead of trying, and there's nothing wrong with coming up with your own hypotheses. I mean, if you want to do that, I highly encourage you to do it. It's a really good exercise to, you know, try to understand the relation of uh, phenomena hypothesis. But here, I want to reiterate the point of, you know, when the clock is ticking, you want to take a passive process of elimination approach to uh, the answers. Okay, so to kind of simulate that, let's just dive right into the answers. Now that we have a good understanding of the stimulus, let's dive right into the answers. And this time I want to consider the answers in pairs. So let's look at A and B. A says in France in the 19th century, the French Academy gave more of its financial support to painting than it did to sculpture. So, okay, so there's some difference in the amount of money that's being doled out, right? You don't want to assume, and we might have a made an assumption that when they told us French Academy was major sponsor of both painting and sculpture, we might have assumed that it sponsored both equally, right? So you don't want to make that assumption, and A is telling you they didn't, right? More money went to painting than it did to sculpture. Okay, maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, B says the French Academy in the 19th century financially supported a greater number of sculptors than painters, but uh, individual painters received more support than on average than individual sculptors. So, okay, that sounds kind of relevant too, right? Like, don't we need to consider how many uh, sculptors were supported compared to how many painters were supported? And doesn't it matter how, like for this painter over here, how much money he got than that sculptor over there? How much money did he get? Right, so I think what A and B are doing, it's like it's like a one-two combo where it's just happening very fast and they're throwing information at you that could be relevant. And you might even be able to use components from A here and components from B here and sculpt your own answer choice that actually is the right answer choice. But look, A and B on their own merits don't work. They don't explain anything. Right, but I, I wanted you to look at them together because I think there's some there's some interesting psychological effect going on here, and it's definitely not by accident that the outside writers uh, opened up the answers with these two um, answer choices that are getting you to really think about like how the money got divided up between uh, you know the sponsored sculptors versus the sponsored painters. Okay, it's a distraction. We'll see very quickly that it's a distraction. But first, let's just focus on the distraction and understand why it, it just it doesn't work, right? Like, look, first of all, 
if the French Academy is giving more of its financial support to painting than it is to sculpting, I would expect that the uh, French Academy would have more influence over painting than sculpting. But that doesn't cohere with what I know to be the facts. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. The French Academy had more influence over sculpture than painting. We're trying to explain why painting exhibited so much innovation, even though the Academy didn't like innovation. It discouraged innovation. So A has it completely backwards. A will be better. I still don't think it would be right, by the way. I don't think it would be right, but it, it would be better if you flipped it around, right? Uh, actually, the easy way to flip this around would be to say less. Yeah, this is the easy way to flip it around. In France in the 19th century, the French Academy gave less of its financial support to painting than it did to sculpture, right? But, you know, the reason why I say even if you flipped it around would be right, I don't know how much less, right? It, it, first of all, it needs, I think it needs to be significantly less, right? And second of all, and here's the really important point, I don't think it's actually relevant to understand the proportion of support from the academy going to painting as opposed to sculpture. Is it 50-50, right? Or is it 90 to sculpture, 10 to painting? That's not the relevant proportion. The relevant proportion is you need to look at painters and what proportion of painters are sponsored by the French Academy versus what proportion of painters are sponsored not by the French Academy. That's the important comparison. And that's the comparison. That's the thing that the right answer choice eventually touches upon. And you can see why the outside writers don't want you to realize that, right? So they're throwing this smoke screen up. They're throwing this, this red herring in your way to, to distract you, to get you to chase this other idea of like, oh, isn't it important how the academy is divvying up money? It's not. However they're divvying up money, they're discouraging innovation, right? Do, do you see what I mean? And B is even more insidious. It says, look, the French Academy supported a greater number of sculptors and painters. You see how it just like jumps right off of A? It's like, oh, let me fix this problem that A introduced, right? You didn't mean to say that, A. Let, let me help you because uh, you meant to say the other way around, right? You meant to say it supported more sculptors than painters. Do you see? That's the fixed version. And now B makes its own... So first of all, this is not a complete remedy of the error, as I already explained. But B makes its own mistake too. Individual painters received more support on average than individual sculptors, meaning individual painters received on average $100 or francs or whatever the money they were using versus individual sculptors received like, you know, a tenth of that, $10, right? So again, I'm like, wait, B, you were trying to fix the issue, but you just brought in a new issue. If the painter is getting more money from the academy, again, wouldn't you expect the painter to be more, to like be more obedient to what the academy wants? You see, so B doesn't do it either, but they both actually achieve their job of just distracting you from the right answer choice, which says stone was so much more expensive than paint and canvas, far more unsponsored, right? Unsponsored paintings were produced than were unsponsored sculptures in France during the 19th century. That's a hypothesis that explains this phenomenon. Look, stone was really expensive. You want to be a sculptor, you got to use stone. Where are you going to get the money to buy stone? You got nowhere else to go but the academy. So you are completely, as a French sculptor, under the academy's thumb. No wonder you're not making any innovation. They don't like innovation. You have to do what they say. Now, let's say you want to be a paint, painter, right? Like paint and canvas, not that expensive. You don't need the academy. You can just go and be an unsponsored painter and make unsponsored painting, meaning paintings have nothing to do with the academy. And C tells us not only was that possible, it was in fact actual. That's just what happened. Far more paintings unconnected to the Academy were produced. Now, is it any wonder, right? Is it any wonder that French painting showed a remarkable degree of innovation? Of course not. Herein lies a potential hypothesis. Okay, so one point I want to address. Some of you are thinking, well, hold on, don't don't we have to make an assumption? Doesn't C like require an assumption that just because it's unsponsored, it must be therefore innovative? Couldn't the unsponsored ones also be duds and like just terrible and not innovative? And you know, da, da, da. sure. I mean, of course, right? It, C does require that assumption. But once it, you know, I mentioned this in the first RE question we did. I'll mention it again here. Notice the softness of the language in the question stem. Which one in the following? Did they say definitively and without any assumptions explain the difference? No, they didn't. They said which one of the following? most helps to explain, right? So it just implicit in the question stem is act of comparison. You need to compare the assumptions that C makes to the assumptions that B make to the assumptions that A make. And it's the one that makes the smallest, tiniest, most reasonable assumption. That's the one you're going to go with. And here it is answer choice C. Now let's look at answer choices D and E. 
The first, which says very few of the artists in France in the 19th century who produced sculptures also produced paintings. So grammatically, this is, I like the sentence, an interesting sentence, right? Like the, the noun here, artist, or what artists, where, in France, right? When, in the 19th century, what kind of artists who produce sculptures? That's all modifier of the artist. So we're talking about artists in France in the 19th century who produce sculptures. In other words, sculptures, right? 19th century French sculptures is what we're talking about. And now we're saying very few of them, of those 19th century French sculptors, very few of them, what's the verb? What's the action? What about them? Also produce paintings. Ah, okay, which means most 19th century French sculptors didn't paint. I mean, just, just think about that, right? Like they, the outside writers had a choice. They could have given you answer choice D in the way that I just said, which is most 19th century French sculptors did not paint. That would have been a super easy to understand statement. They had a choice of saying that. They deliberately decided not to do that. Instead, they gave you this convoluted monster of a sentence, right? And yeah, that's just who they are. And that's why I stress so hard your ability to do grammar analysis, right? Pick out the subject, pick out the modifiers of that subject, and then pick out the predicate to really understand what the sentence is saying. I don't think I need to say anything more, right? Like once you understand what the sentence is saying, it's like, uh, okay, like what the hell are you even doing here, D? Like you're not even trying to, you're not even pretending like you're, you're uh, explaining the phenomenon, right? E says, although the Academy was the primary sponsor sculptor and sculpture and painting, the total amount of financial support that French sculptors and painters received from sponsors declined during the 19th century. So they say, look, you, you map how much like in over the 19th century, from the beginning of the 19th century to the end of the 19th century, Total amount of support, right? In uh, first year, it was, uh, I don't know, $100 million, right? Next year, it was this much. Next year, it went up a little bit. It went down, and then you just kind of map it how much, how much. It just kind of declined. That's all. It's just a total amount declined. Now, in any given year, in any given year, how much of it was owing to the academy? How much of the support was owing to other sponsors? That's not clear. He doesn't say. He just says it was a major. The academy was the primary sponsor. Okay, fine. So the plurality... Right, am I to interpret that as majority or plurality? Not clear, one of the two. But again, how is this going to explain anything? Right, The total amount of money went down and that decline didn't distinguish between sculpture and painting. So you cannot point to answer choice E to explain the difference in results between sculpture and painting, why sculpture was not innovative, yet painting was innovative. E doesn't understand the difference between the two. So it can't be the right answer.